Hi, my name is Amanda Arbuckle. I'm a member of this year's Catholic Leadership Development, and I'm going to be introducing you to my capstone project, A Minute of Mindfulness. And I'm going to be looking at multiple spiritual and psychological practices to promote well-being. So just a little bit more about me. I am a junior undergraduate at WashU. I am studying cognitive neuroscience in English with a minor in religious studies, and I'm involved in the Catholic Student Center, of course, through Catholic Leadership Development, as a member of Gracia Plena, the Catholic Women's Group, um, as a young Catholic scholar, and also as a core group leader, I lead um, Bible study. So just a little bit of background about the project. Part of what gave me the idea to do this project is as a college student, I just, I know how very stressful life can be. And I've noticed how often this stress interferes with our well-being, our, especially our psychological well-being. Um, so I wanted to create a project that would help improve this psychological well-being within the CSC community, especially within the students themselves. So working with my mentor, Don Eccleston, we came up with an idea for this project. And basically in this project, I would be creating a weekly column that would be within the Newman News each week. And it would be walking the community members through a different psychological or spiritual practice to promote their well-being. And the idea was that this project would be designed for people who didn't really have time to take a whole class on mindfulness but who really wanted to take small steps toward improving their well-being. So as I was developing this project, I wanted to keep in mind um, our leadership values, especially discernment, authenticity, and integrity, and courage. And definitely this project, I feel like, incorporates these values. It's especially authenticity because I'm relying on my strengths as a person to develop this project. I'm an English major, I have a lot of uh, background in writing, and as a cognitive neuroscience major, I've come into contact with a lot of the practices I put forth in my column. So relying on my strengths to do that and also courage to be able to put my, my column out there and hopefully it would be accepted by the community. So one of the themes I focus on in my column is the idea of prayer. And theologically, we're told that prayer is a great practice because it furthers our relationship with God and strengthens our connection to Him. But it also can have some wonderful psychological well-being because it can basically allow us to focus more in the present moment and reduce um, a tendency we have called mind-wandering. And one of the practices that I introduced in my column was this idea of a sacramental pause. And this is a type of centering prayer that basically refocuses our attention on the present moment. So as part of my project, I collaborated with Gracia Plena and another CLD member, Mary Grace Gorman. And I introduced the sacramental pause on our retreat. And I got some really good feedback after the experience. The retreatants, they thought this was a really nice prayer, especially for someone who's really busy and doesn't have a lot of time to set aside for prayer. It gives you a nice relaxing moment in the day. Another thing that I really enjoyed on the Gracia Plena retreat that really incorporates this idea of mindfulness is we did a activity, a yoga activity. And What's really great about yoga is it utilizes some of the same things as the sacramental pause. It, it relies on focusing on the present moment and it, like I said earlier, it reduces this tendency to mind wander or worry about things in the future and the past. So what is this tendency to mind wander? So mind wandering is a ph phenomenon you see w with increased activity in the default mode network of the brain, as you can see here. And it's just this automatic tendency for our brain to wander away from what we're doing in the present moment. And as we talked about in positive psychology, Dr. Bono's course, it really can lead to increased in happiness in people. 
So another prayer I talked about in my column is called Lexio Divina. Um, you may or may not be familiar with this type of prayer, but it was introduced to me at the CHC itself. And so I wanted to sort of give back to my community and talk about it. And like the sacramental pause, it really refocuses attention into the present moment through um, reading of the scriptures. And it basically, the way this prayer works is you reflect on these different passages and you reread them and think about like how they relate to you in the present moment and what stands out to you from them. So I began my columns in January and of course what's on everyone's mind in January, New Year, is resolutions. And if you're anything like me, you often have trouble like sticking to your resolutions and making them actually stick. So I wanted to share in my first column that I wrote some psychological tips for actually keeping resolutions. So some of the tips I shared in my first column is I talked about this idea of breaking the resolutions down into little steps, sort of mini goals. That way you can assess your progress as you're working through your goal and actually see the results of your progress so far. And the idea also of when you're listing out your resolutions, making a list, but also specifying when and where you're going to do the resolution. And oftentimes having a support network to sort of cheer you on and hold you accountable can make those resolutions even easier to keep. So sort of going along with this idea of New Year's resolutions, in another column I talked about um, how habits are formed and how you can basically break old habits and encourage better behavior. And what this cycle gets at is the idea that oftentimes with like this habit we have, it occurs in response to a cue. So for instance, the example we use in class is you have a little alert on, on your computer that tells you you've gotten a Facebook post. And of course the cue prompts the behavior. So you go onto Facebook for instance and spend X number of hours there. And then you derive some sort of pleasure from it, at least in the moment, you know, even if you regret the amount of time you spend on it later. And that's what the reward is. And that reward promotes you to uh, continue with that behavior. So part of um, helping to break these habits is either like removing yourself from the cue that, pr that prompts that behavior or even using that cue to prompt another, a better behavior. So you see a flash on Facebook, you decide, okay, it's time to take a walk instead. So this is just a um, diagram showing how um, dopamine release um, in response to anticipation of reward. So right here. And it's also showing where dopamine is being produced in the brain itself. So another practice I wanted to talk about in my column is the idea of practicing gratitude. And that can be really hard for a lot of us. And I know oftentimes I struggle with it just because I'll have a busy day ahead of me. And I think to myself, I don't really have time for that. But in my column, I talked about the importance of gratitude for happiness. And I introduced this idea of keeping a gratitude journal, which sort of like our centering prayer we talked about, it forces you to think in the present moment and to reflect on experiences you've had throughout the day that were positive or like learning moments for you. And it's just a conscious amount of time that you're setting aside to do this practice. So within my column, I also wanted to incorporate the spiritual season in my writing. And of course, my column coincided with Lent and the three aspects of Lent that the Catholic Church promotes are this idea of fasting and almsgiving as well as prayer. And we've talked a lot about prayer recently, so I just want to bring you into the other two I talked about in my column. So first off, the idea of fasting. Um, of course, in the Catholic Church, we believe that fasting is important because it basically strips away a dormant and helps us to reestablish, refocus on our relationship with God. And there is evidence too that abstaining from something such as chocolate actually improves, increases our enjoyment of that thing later on if we decide to 
incorporated back into our life. They did a psychological study where um, participants abstained from eating chocolate and they were given the opportunity to eat chocolate in the lab and they actually had greater happiness than those who hadn't abstained from eating the chocolate. So another um, component of Lent I talked about in my column is this idea of almsgiving. And in my positive psychology course, we talked about this idea of pro-social spending. And they've done a lot of wonderful studies. And first off, people who engage in more pro-social pro behaviors, such as you know giving to charities or volunteering, they report greater subjective well-being or happiness. And they've also found that um, if you engage in pro-social behavior, you often feel like you have more time in the day. So that's another benefit that's been found from psychology. So I just want to conclude. I know, especially with the coronavirus and the pandemic that's going on, it can be really hard to keep up with the faith and to keep up with prayer. And part of my advice from, for you, um, apart from like adhering to some of the practices that I mentioned in this presentation, is focusing on what you can control in your life. You can pray. You know, if you, you're not with your loved ones currently, you know, you can reach out to them via technology, hopefully, and just keep up connections there. And really, that's what mindfulness is all about, is living in the present moment and really focusing on what's going on currently so you don't miss it. And just to conclude, thank you so much for listening to my presentation. I just want to give a special thanks out to Sister Mary Alice and Michelle Miller, um, our CLD leaders, um, for all the work and all the time they put into developing this wonderful program. Special thanks, of course, to my mentor, Don Eggleston, for helping me work through this project and giving me feedback. Special thanks, of course, to my uh, fellow CLD members, especially Mary Grace Gorman, for helping me um, put my sacramental pause to the test in her retreat. Um, also, I want to thank all the CLD leaders and guest speakers who came and helped helped us understand what it means to be a leader. I want to thank Dr. Bono for allowing me to interview him and to incorporate the class material into my columns. And I want to thank all the retreatants, of course, who participated in our sacramental pause during the retreat. And thank you so much for listening to my presentation. Have a great day.